Acer Racing, they make bearings, not girls. Don't get misled. We have an early fit scale, guys. This is a fit scale gas power two wheel drive sedan. 3,100. That's a lot of money, guys. And guess what? This was a kit. Electronics were not included. What's up, Nitro Gang? I'm devoting an entire video to a review of RC Car Magazines. This is the newest issue of Radio Control Car Action Magazine. I talked about this in a previous video, but now we're actually gonna go over it page by page. Now, the front cover has a really nice looking Yokomo, but this in fact is basically a toaster. We're gonna talk more about toasters later. I'm gonna have something else for you. This right here is a June 2005 issue of Radio Control Car Action Magazine. I'm also going to be going over this page by page, pointing out some of the cool things I like in here. But let me just say right now, the cover is basically the epitome of Nitro Touring Car technology. We have a Sen CT4S and a Schumacher 21. These are some of the fastest Nitro Touring Cars ever made. But if you were thinking this is the only old RC magazine I have, well you'd be surprised. Check this one out guys. This is actually not even Radio Control Car Action Magazine. This is a September 2004 issue of RC Racing Cars. This is a French magazine guys. French. So yeah, I can't read French. Je m'appelle uh, Tubox. Je m'appelle Hybrid. Je m'appelle Dimitri. That means my name is. If you thought I only had vintage American magazines, well, you'd be making a big mistake. If you were asking yourself what's better, box one or box two, this goes out to James S. Well, I hypothesize that you're going to really enjoy box one. Why? Because that's the biggest box, James S. When you watch this video, when you get your Primal MT, I just want to say congratulations. You're the man for getting one of the best, most epic gas RCs in history. But what really matters is box one or two. That's what we all want to know. So put in the comments when you see this and when you get your RC. Um, I basically just bought this on eBay randomly. Why? Because I really just wanted to see what was available overseas. And I could see the front has a Sen Genesis, which we did have in America. There are some models here. This is a EB4 Rally, a Thunder Tiger. And we have the Buggy 1.6 AVO Racing, which probably is just some kind of, uh, you know, clone version of a Dirt Tracks Fire Hammer or maybe the Traxxas Monster Buggy. I'm not quite sure. But I don't know if I'll have enough time in this video to review this magazine. If you guys want to see what's inside, put in the comments. If I have the time and I have the ability and will, I will make sure to do it. Right now, let's go over the brand new issue of Radio Control Car Action Magazine. And you know what I'm going to do? If I don't like it, I might actually burn this at the end with some nitro fuel. That's right. It's going to be the perfect metaphor. You know, like the great American burning of books, I think that was actually held one time. Or the great, uh, well, I don't know if they call it great... The bra burning that feminist groups sometimes do. Well, this is going to be the E-Word RC toaster burning of 2020. So, guys, this video gets over 100 likes. I'm going to do it. Actually, you know what? I don't govern my life based on likes. I'm going to do what I want to do in this video, and that's final. But if you want to give it a like, go ahead. Inside, of course, there's a flashier electric on the front. You know, it's just the body. We all know the Nitro Gang doesn't really care about bodies. It's about the chassis. It's about the substance. It's about the content. That's what matters. You could put a body on anything. I could put this body on a freaking bagel if I wanted to. Guess what? It would still be a bagel. All right. We have some ads here for Proline tires. Typical as expected. The Falcon racing car from the front. Let's keep going. Of course, Rustler 4x4. These are actually pretty good cars. I have nothing bad to say about them other than they're not gas or electric. Uh, RPM, normal stuff, blah, blah. Here we go. Some parts. I uh, have really nothing to say about that. More parts. We have some scale crawler stuff. Toyota Hilux that's been modded with lights and all of that. Once again, a bagel with a nice body. Don't care. More bagels with nice bodies. Also, don't care. And uh, a freaking dozen bagels with nice bodies. Once again, don't care. I have absolutely nothing to say about pretty much any of this. It's a bunch of bagels. I don't want to eat too many carbs right now. Parts. Blah, blah. The Tamiya Mini Lunchbox. Um, pretty cool. I don't want it either way. There we go, Tamiya ESC, small design, it does wheelies, there you go, that's all you need to know. Let's keep moving. Man, there's like, how many pages are there on here? The Tamiya Lunchbox Mini has page 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six. It's got six pages, guys. They devoted six pages to a Micro Tamiya lunchbox. I don't know, this is like some kind of beginning of the Nitro Gang warfare going on right here. Okay, LiPo battery chargers, of course, figures, Traxxas. Got more LiPo battery chargers. What's the big deal with this? Just plug it in, you're fine. Get the basic $30 old IMAX or IBX, whatever replica charger, you'll be fine. Okay. I have nothing to say, once again, got good looking bagels here. This is like the everything bagel of the RC world right here. Chassis as expected, really doesn't look much different than like a 1997 HPI Pro 2. If you guys know about old RCs, the Pro 2. Maybe even the old style Yokomos. Well, this is a Yokomo, so that actually makes sense. Yep, this is a Yokomo, I figured. Carbon fiber pan chassis, typical stuff, nothing new here. All right, ready to crawl. We got some crawlers going on. The Red Cat Racing Gen 8 pack. This is like the one that you build. The pack model comes with a chassis. You could add your own electronics and your own body, whatever you want. This is like the cheaper version of the Red Cat crawlers. I actually got a Gen 8, so I'm not gonna be hating on that, but I'll be honest with you, the only reason I got the Gen 8 is because it was on sale. If it wasn't on sale, I would not have gotten it. Otherwise, Gen 8 is actually a pretty cool technologically advanced uh, car for a crawler that I do actually like. But once again, don't care. Castle Mamba Micro X. Man, do I have fond memories of these. I remember when the first Castle Mamba Micros came out years ago. Man, do I have stories about this years ago. Somebody had a Duratrax Mini Quake just like this. Now this one's actually mine. I've had it for a long time. I've done a couple of videos on it. It's actually a pretty cool little micro RC. This is full brushless as well, running a 3S LiPo here. It's pretty scary, this little guy right here. Either way, somebody was running this Duratrax here with this Castle Mamba Micro system against an FG Monster Beetle. And of course, uh, this fully destroyed the FG Monster Beetle because, you know, the FG Monster Beetle topped out at like maybe 30 miles an hour. This was like the time frame when, uh, you know, the basic HPI Baja was out. You guys see right here? It has the Tacon brushless system inside. Pretty powerful little beast. Aluminum shocks, carbon fiber all around inside. But let's put this to the side. You know, we don't want to get the E-words in the way here. Let's keep going. Uh, have nothing to say about this. Servos, lipos, obvious type of stuff. Okay, this is the new Red Cat Axe, they call it. The Axe Edition. This is the brushless version with a different body of the Gen 8. Really cool RC, you know, if you're into crawlers, this is as good as they get. Unless you're a Traxxas TRX-4 supporter, they, then in that case, those are as good as they get. But of course, you have the rivalry between the Red Cats and the Traxxas TRX-4. And sometimes Axial will throw themselves in there. I personally like the Red Cat setup myself. Let's keep going. Tires. Do you see what I'm saying? There's no nitro commercials. There's no gas commercials. There's nothing. I mean, what am I going to do with this? If I was like surviving outside in the woods. I'll probably use this magazine for firewood. I don't know what else I'm gonna do. You know what? We're gonna do this right now. Now it's time for one of my favorite old radio control car action magazines. This is the 2005 June issue. Let's go through it page by page. In the front we have some Trinity ads for electric motors. At this time they were still mostly all brushed. We have some wheels from Proline. Oh, 40 series Cayenne HD. Actually, I just got some spinners from my MGT. Some bodies from Proline. 40 series Big Joe tires. The Team Associated TC4. They did make these in the Nitro versions, and guess what? I have one, guys. That's right. Never before seen on my channel. This is the Team Associated Nitro TC3. It has a two speed 0.18 pull start engine. Four-wheel drive, shaft drive, one of the best 10 scale touring cars ever made. This particular one, of course, the engine is seized as usual with any older Nitro RC. This one needs a good amount of work and this will be a future project. We have an ad for the T-Max, claimed top speed of 40 miles per hour. This was way back when they still had the TRX 2.5 engine. A lot of people say they're bad, but you know what? Honestly, I would attribute a lot of those errors with the failed connecting rods to just running too lean. I've ran the TRX engines for a very long time, and I have never had a single failure. So, I mean, based on the statistics alone, 
one could easily say it's probably attributable to user error. What do you guys think? Put in the comments if you like the Traxxas engines or if you dislike them. Some more ads for Team Losi. These are pretty much all their racing models. They go through all of the wins that Triple X NT had. Triple X whatever. There's a lot of X's going on here. Honestly, kind of controversial name, but they won a lot of races. This is a pure racing brand. No surprise there. Reedy Brushless Motors. This is probably one of the first times I started seeing brushless technology in one of these early magazines. At this time, it was still pretty much common to run uh, brushed motors. So brushless technology here was pretty much a top thing. Reedy Neo 1 brushless motor, $149. Brushless and brushed ESC, $329. So these things were not cheap, as you could tell. This is more than the current Red Cat Gen 8 Axe Edition with the brushless setup already inside. We got a Novak Smart Tray, which looks like a battery charging equalizer. Some pretty trick stuff back in the time. People used to use this kind of stuff. I mean, you needed to really make sure that your cells were equally balanced and matched and charged because, yeah, lipos were not a thing yet, really. RC18T, aluminum upgrade kit. I actually owned an RC18T and one of the MT versions. Not a bad chassis, but you know, the wheel hubs were very, very non standard size, so you always had a problem with the wheels. One of the reasons I got rid of the entire 18 scale RC18T system in general. We got Yokomo, they talk about their race winning championship car. Of course, they're one of the best. Uh, competitors in on-road touring cars at the time and probably still are. Yokomos are not cheap to come by and maybe one day I'll be lucky enough to get one of their Nitro GT4 models. We have Kyosho Inferno buggies right over here. Now this one is an electric guys. This is a 16th scale. Now surprisingly you could tell on top here there is a cooling head but this was just a joke. This is an electric buggy. They basically put this to more or less copy the larger 777 model, which is kind of funny. I've never seen any manufacturer go out of their way to make sure their 16 scales look so much like their 8 scales. Pretty funny. Some team associated stuff. Blah, blah. We're going to skip this. Oh, yeah. XTM, guys. XTM. A 7th scale, ready to run. Nitro, 0.28 powered, 2-speed buggy. Now, XTM really didn't survive the test of time because, you know, they're pretty much gone relatively today. But I always liked XTM. Why? Because they were different. I mean, who makes a 7th scale, ready-to-run, 2-speed buggy? Nobody. Find one, you're never going to find one. Usually, 8th scales is where it's at. This is a 7th scale, guys, with a 2-speed. Buggies almost never have 2-speeds, but I think this is a great idea. XTM was thinking outside the box. I know Jank from URC had a couple XTMs on his channel. I think he had the XTM rail. Um, he said, you know, some good and bad things about it, but I personally like XTM just because it was different at the time. Unfortunately, I think they were just a little bit too overpriced because they were sold as pretty expensive models, but people always viewed them as substandard and non-hobby grade, although they are hobby grade, trust me. We got the Duratrax Mini Quake. Guess what? You're in for a surprise. I have one. There it goes, guys. This might be one of the nicest Mini Quakes you're ever going to see. This runs a Dynamite Fuse brushless system, a Tacon brushless motor, and guess what? It has an upper tower chassis strut right here, or a bar, whatever you want to call it. doesn't matter. Now, Arma is popular for putting these tower-to-tower -tower bases on their 6S models. Well, Duratrax was doing this years ago. Now this might be fully upgraded. It's got some other carbon fiber parts here, of course, and aluminum drivetrain all around. In the front, it has aluminum drive shafts. But Duratrax was putting these tower braces years ago. Look at this little beast. I always like it, even the suspension. Look how smooth this vintage Duratrax suspension is. Man, this thing is actually pretty incredible. Got some electric RCs over here. We're gonna skip this for now. The Team Associated RC18T. I just talked about this before. I had one. It was alright for a micro, but a lot of non-standard 18 scale parts. The reason I got rid of it. Some Reader's Rides. We have a Savage Reader Ride of the Month. We have a Mugen. We have an Associated RC10 GT. Oh man, this brings back a lot of memories. The Novak Super Sport Plus system. 
Guys, the Novak SS5800 was the first brushless motor system I ever had, and you'll never guess which RC it was in. It was in the Tamiya TLT1. Now, of course, the TLT1 was not really the best choice to put this in, but at the time, I built the TLT1 as a kit, and the 5800 system was like a beast inside there. I still miss the system. If I can get it this day, I probably would. A full two-page ad for Team Associated. So you can tell right here, this is before the MGT 8.0 came out. This is still the MGT. They called it the Monster GT back then. It had a flag. And at this time, it was still the .21 motor. This is actually the same exact Team Associated that I have, guys. Man, I'm surprised. Look at this body. You see my Team Associated TC3 body? It's exactly the same. So this is pretty much some Nitro Vintage history right here for you. Here's an ad for Kyosho Mad Force, which, once again, I want one of these. This is a three-speed solid axle monster truck and their little version, the mini Kyosho one right here. We don't care about that one, the Mini Z Mad Force, I think they called it. Mini Zs were actually a very popular race class. Uh, I did some racing in the Mini Z segment years ago. We have some tech tips, you know, blah, blah. We're going to skip this. Some more commercials for the RC18T. It seems like the 18 scales are beginning to dominate, like even this old 2005 magazine. Here are some tips on how to, you know, basically uh, solve problems when you have RCs. Now, this is how to make homemade drive pins. They use an Allen wrench. I actually use body clips, pretty thick 8 scale body clips. If you just cut off a piece, you could use those as wheel pins in your hubs. Pretty good system. I've never had a single issue with those. Skip this, we have some one-way bearings. Uh, slipping, roto start. Pretty much a common problem in about 75% of my Nitro RCs. Oh yeah, here we go. The first Traxxas Jado. Um, ready to run April 2005. So this was back when it had the 2.5 engine in it and it still has a claim speed of 55 miles an hour. Now my Jado that I have, I got 54 miles an hour. Of course I was running really rich with 20% nitro fuel. So I have no doubt that even this original one could have reached 55 miles an hour. They have a graph here. I actually showed this graph in many of my videos. They're comparing the speeds of every other stadium truck. They have a Trax Nitro Rustler, Team Loser Triple XNT, there are Trax Nitro Evader, Associate RC 10 GT. Of course, the Trax's Jado is at the top of the curve because it's got a two speed, guys. Two speeds, generally always gonna win. Two speeds are something that makes Team X Tony happy. Team Losi Triple X NT with a raspberry colored body. Well, I mean, that's all right, whatever. JR Racing Radios. Honestly, I never liked the JR programmable radios. They're just very complicated. The controls, I don't like them. To set all your sub trims and EPAs, just so complicated. Personally, I avoid these as much as possible. Oh, here we go. Schumacher Nitro Fusion 21 versus Sen CT4S. Some of the most rare, coolest, I think, 10th scale touring cars you can get. So let me tell you right now, I'm going to read this. Um, blah, blah, right here. The Schumacher's Big Block Fusion 21 sedan is rated for a staggering 80 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour, guys, from a 10th scale sedan. That's freaking insane. While the Big Block 0.15 CT4S punches a 73.4. So the Sen was a 73 mile an hour RC. Now, I know one of my viewers and subscribers and friends in real life has a Sen CT4S. So hopefully we can get this on my channel soon. Put in the comments if you wanna see it. 74 miles an hour basically, insane. Here is the Sen CT4S. Two speed, 0.15 engine, belt drive. Nothing really see here. I guess this was just some really high gearing, but hopefully we can get this on my channel soon. There it goes. And here is the star of the show, the Schumacher Fusion 21. Guys, this had a three speed. I'm not sure if I know of any other road car that had a three speed. Now you can't tell that it has a three speed because the transmission gears are hidden here, but this is a big block Thunder Tiger engine. And the three speed, you could tell on the clutch belt here, there are three gears. I don't know if you can make it out in the camera, but trust me, this is a three speed Thunder Tiger 21 powered beast. Hopefully one day I can get this. They're pretty rare to come by these days. We have some Offner racing engines and polished pipes. Man, I miss looking at stuff like this, man. There's nothing like looking at a whole giant series of engines with like their horsepower quotes. Of course, for some reason here, they don't tell you how much horsepower they have. It's quite unfortunate. I always used to like that kind of stuff. 
Savage 25. Man, this brings back a lot of memories. When the first Savage 21 came out, that thing was really slow, guys. Um, I had friends that had them, and they would barely move. Traxxas Jado. Here we go. Man, this thing was actually pretty revolutionary at the time because the stadium truck segment was pretty hot at this time, and there was a lot of competition. Today, the Nitro Stadium truck segment is basically dead. I think the Traxxas Jado is one of the last ones to even be in this segment. But this was a beast at that time, and I still have this. I actually have two of these. One of my favorite Nitro RCs to this day. Acer Racing, they make bearings, not girls. Don't get misled. Duratrax Evader, I actually had this exact one when it was new because there were constantly discounts and tower hobbies for these, but it was just so slow. This had a modified 15-turn motor, but I gotta say... This probably didn't even break the 20 mile per hour limit at that time. Of course, I was running like, you know, the cheapest Tower Hobbies 1500 milliamp hour uh, NICAD pack. So that's probably my fault. But batteries at this time, they were money, guys. Lipos were not cheap. We have some Intergy aluminum parts over here. Kyosho Half 8 Mini Inferno. You guys see the cooling head right here? Even though this is electric, it's got a cooling head sticking out the body. So this is just for show. It does nothing. It's not even a heat sink mounted on the motor because the motor is way outside of the cooling head. It looks like it's on the ESC actually. So maybe it does do something. I'm not sure. I'm going to read this right here. It says, the cosmetic cooling head sits over the speed control receiver's heat sink and is easily removed by releasing a single body clip. The on-off switch is easy to reach and read. The XTM Accelerator Electric. The Nitro version is what I want. The Nitro Accelerator is what I want. Top speed, they say, of this electric is uh, 12 miles an hour. So extremely slow, as slow as possible. Um, nothing to say. A couple off the ads with their buggies. Their 8th scale buggies were pretty much dominating at the time. There were so many versions. They had the Hyper, they had the Violator, they had the... I don't even know what the names were, but there were just a lot of versions of these. We have some uh, motors right here. The dawn of a new era works Kalari. Oh, of course, Kalari. Kalari is a pretty high-end brand there. It ain't no Novorossi, right? But Kalari is pretty much up there. Are you ready for this? We have an early fit scale, guys. This is a fit scale gas power two-wheel drive sedan. We're going to take a look at it. Man, this is pretty much up there. Really nice type of design. Obviously, you know, these were very expensive at the time. The price right here, it says... 3100 that's a lot of money guys and guess what this was a kit electronics were not included fit scales used to be you know a rich man sport today you can get the primal mt for less than this with everything included and the mt is you know superior to this in many 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 ways and add for the traxxas revo guys I had this exact one when it first came out, and ever since it came out, it's been winning awards every single year with a TRX 2.5R engine. This chassis, when I saw this ad, I mean, it was pretty much over. I went to the hobby store and I got it pretty much, you know, as soon as I could. What was great about it is it had two servos for the steering. It had the Opti drive, which, you know, as time uh, dictated, uh, pretty much was useless. It had an included receiver battery pack with a charger. This was like some cool stuff. No RCs really had that at that time. So this seemed like a bargain. It seemed like, you know, revolutionary. Literally the name Revo, revolutionary, is what I think it's called. And I was very happy with this. Never disappointed me. Never let me down a single time. Here is the HPI Savage 28 kit. This was actually pretty rare today. These are hard to come by. I think these had a three speed at that time. Let's see if I'm actually right on that. Um, not sure if it's going to tell us this or not, but there were some models with the kits, I think the SS models, that did have the three-speed transmission inside. The Duratrax Firehammer. Um, I always wanted one of these. These are like copies of the FG, but they're just so expensive. They're really funny looking, and for Duratrax, which is like a low-end entry model brand, these were selling for like $800 at the Tower Hobbies at the time, you know. Tamiya TNX. Gotta get me one of these, pretty cool. We have the Team Losi Triple X NT Adam Drake 2. So Adam Drake was pretty much a guy that made Team Losi popular. He won a lot of races. There's an Adam Drake edition of the Team Losi with a laser edged pipe. This looks like the one. Some racing stuff, we're gonna skip this. The HPI Nitro RS43. Man, this brings back a lot of memories. This had the 18 Outlaw SS engine. 
I don't know, but HPI always had really cool sounding engine names. They had a 12 RSS, 18 SS. Of course, the 15 FE is not a very cool sounding name, but I mean, I started with an HPI Nitro RS43 as my first RC. I'm not familiar with this brand, but this is pretty much similar to the HPI Proceed and some of the Serpent models. This is an eight scale on-road race car. You can pretty much tell they all have a similar layout with a really fat rear tires with a large big block engine with the Centax style two-speed transmission with these quick release wheel hubs. Pretty much similar. Of course, this was probably a fortune. You had to build it and it didn't come with electronics or an engine, which is fairly common for one of these. It has a claim top speed of 80 miles an hour, guys. 80 miles an hour. Freaking fast. Send TT4S. Once again, gotta get me one of these. I like Send. They're just so weird looking. Like some of their bodies were just so funny. They had this name called the Send Fun Factor. It was just funny. But the CT4S, 73.4 miles an hour. I mean, there's no joke. Nothing to laugh about here. This was pretty quick. An ad for Tower Hobbies. Man, if you guys have your old Tower Hobbies catalogs, honestly, you should probably send one or two to me because I collect these things. There are tracks Warhead. I had one of these years ago. This was more or less a copy of the Savage, but I gotta say it was cheap. Not this one, but eventually when it was near, you know, becoming discontinued, they were selling for like two hundred eighty dollars. And uh, two-speed, four reverse, big block engine, uh, eight shocks all around, similar style chassis, twin vertical plates. I like these. I would still get one of these today. I even had the RTX twenty seven, which was a later version of this model. Oh, the Tamiya TLT-1. I had one of these as I stated before. Pretty cool little kit to build. I actually regret selling this because prices on these are relatively high now on eBay. Team Losi Mini T. These were very popular also in like, you know, basement racing carpet segments. Pretty popular type of RC. Pretty cheap running cost and easy to mod and they were fairly durable. RCX, always wanted to go here. It's uh, kind of like an RC exhibit, maybe next year. Nova Rossi, I know Botagel and Nitro Mike are big fans of the Nova Rossi engines. I personally was never lucky enough to have one of these. I don't even have a starter box, and all these run back plates. There's no pull starts. You know, if you want a pull start, you don't go with a Nova Rossi. You guys see this? The temperature gauge from Venom. This is what I used in my Team Losi when I cooked the egg in one of my videos. You guys see this? I said smart temp sensor right here. Man, some vintage RC stuff right here, right? And there it is. The end of the magazine, what is this? Protoform, they sold bodies. It's funny, Dodge Stratus, man. I always liked the Dodge Stratus body, but like when they applied them to RC cars and racing in NASCAR, the Stratus body looked nothing like the Dodge Stratus in real life. I don't know why they do that. Like no one's gonna go out and buy a Dodge Stratus that looks like a NASCAR that in real life doesn't look like the Stratus at all that you're buying. So kind of misleading there, but you know, I guess that's one of those things. Boom, we're done. All right, Nitro Gang, we're done with that. I hope you enjoyed the look at this old RC magazine and I guess the fair comparison I made to the newer one. Of course, they're completely different. There's no Nitros in new RC magazines, but hey, we always got ourselves a restoration project with this vintage Team Associated TC3. This is gonna be a future video. I gotta get to work on these. These things take some time. Obviously, the recording is really what slows me down. I could probably finish all of this in a matter of two to three hours, to be honest with you, but like these videos really require a lot of research. I don't wanna just rip the motor apart and say, here, it works, I fixed it, because uh, that's honestly not interesting. Personally, I make videos that I also wanna watch, and if years later, I wanna watch one of my own videos, I wanna like what I recorded, I wanna like what I said, and I wanna have a good time. Anybody could go out and just fix this, run it, boom, it's fast, there you go, have a good day. But, you know, there's a lot of history behind these things. I honestly respect these. Some people call RC toys, I'm not one of those people. These things are not toys, these are pretty much top of the line machines. These motors produce so much power for their displacement that if you actually did the math, this would produce more horsepower per displacement than some of the fastest cars in the world. Even I think a Bugatti Veyron, this motor actually makes more power. The reason is the pinch at the top of the cylinder, the nitro fuel, the two stroke, all of these things combined together to basically make this thing not a toy for those of you that think it's a toy. Anyways guys, thanks so much for watching. If you wanna see any more magazines, I actually just bought a lot of, a whole bunch of old RC magazines and maybe I'll do a video on that. If you wanna see it, put in the comments. See you next time.